everyone, thank you for checking out another video. This won't be so much of a tutorial. It's going to be more of a demonstration of a tool that I made that's going to allow people to try out and experiment with L systems. I don't want to mislead anyone, so please don't think that this video is going to be instructions on how to create your own L system system or, or application or anything like that where it will it'll draw it for you. This is just simply a tool that will let you put in rules and then you'll see how those rules act. If you want to learn more about all systems or build out a system like this yourself, then there are some videos out there that do a much better job of explaining those things than I would be able to. There's videos that I relied on when I started working on this tool. So I'll put it a link in the description to some of those resources and hopefully you can check those out. But for the people that already know a little bit about L systems or maybe you're just interested in seeing how rules look when you, when you plug them in and you play around with them, this tool is great for that, and I kind of designed it so that it has a little bit of random aspects, but mostly you just put in the things you want to see, and they appear. So, uh, just to start off with a very, very basic look at what an L system is, just imagine that we have a string, uh, and you really don't have to imagine because we have it right here. We have a string with one character in it, and the character is F. Now, F means something. Every character in these systems will mean something, and I'll explain what they mean. So, the first two, F and G, they both mean draw a black line straight up. So we start at the bottom right here in the middle of the image. Uh, this first F, if we only do one iteration, is going to draw up. The key to every L system is that with each iteration, starting with the first iteration, we replace instructions or characters. You can call them whichever one you want. We replace them with sets of instructions. So we will take this F on the very first iteration. We're going to replace it with this string. So we've introduced the G, which is the same, technically the same instruction as F, which is just draw a straight line. Uh, but we've, we've also introduced four other instructions. We've got this open bracket, and hopefully you can see this. I can try to zoom in a little bit. We've got an open bracket. We've got a plus symbol, close bracket, another open bracket, and then a minus symbol. So technically four instructions. The plus and minus, uh, I'll start with those. So plus means rotate one way minus means rotate the other way so and you can kind of see where this is going if you're if you're looking ahead at the image you can see that at some point we split we have we have some kind of split we're going to the right we're going to the left and so there's got to be some kind of rotation at some point and that's what the plus and minus that's where they come into play so if you think about this abstractly there must also be a way for us to return to this position because if we're drawing a line this way we have to come back at some point in order to draw a line the other way. So that's what the open and close brackets do. Open bracket means save my position, save my rotation. Where am I and which way am I oriented? We want to save that. The close bracket means take me back to the last time I saved. So if we close and open, or if we open and close, then we're just resetting back to that point. And this just happens to be the point right here. So what are we saying so far? So if we, we're starting with a straight line, then we're going to save our position. We're going to rotate with the plus symbol. Then we're going to draw another line at that new rotation. Close bracket, which means we return to our original position and orientation before the open bracket. We do an open bracket again immediately. We rotate, we draw, we return. We don't do anything after we return, but we have returned. So that's the first rule. The second rule is that G will always become GG. And the reason for that is just as we iterate, we want to keep the split lower. Um, and if we're always reducing our length of the line, which is something that we have to do as we iterate, or else it would just grow forever. Uh, as we add more iterations, the line must become smaller. If the line becomes smaller and we want to keep it somewhat tall, then we just have to increase kind of the length. So that's what this GG does. So if I generate this a few times, there's a little bit of randomness that I'll talk about in a second. But it's always going to create kind of the same image because these are it's doing exactly what the instructions tell it to do. So if I bump up the iterations to two, you'll see that we split again. And we split at the ends of these lines because remember that we're replacing every F that we find with this set of instructions. So if we do that, if I copy this, on the second iteration, it will literally become this if I'm ignoring the fact that the G's would also be replaced. So let's just pretend that this rule right here doesn't exist and we're only working with this one. This is what it would essentially look like, something like that on the second iteration. So if we keep going up, let's bump the iterations up to seven. 
it's getting a little short to see. Let's bump this up a little bit. And we have this nice, very simple recursive tree just kind of spanning up out of the ground, and then it's constantly splitting and rotating. So that's about as simple as it can get with these instructions. I have a couple more instructions that I added just for people to play around with. One of them is an asterisk, and it's just going to draw a fruit. So let's, let's go back down to two iterations, and we'll add some fruit at the end of these. Remember that we've rotated, and we're drawing a line. So if I add this fruit here, theoretically, I think it's supposed to draw at the end of the branches. Maybe. Okay. I forgot that I added a little bit of some randomization in the code where the fruit won't draw on the lowest levels uh, just to keep the fruit off the ground a little bit. So there is there is some randomization around when the fruit would actually draw. So, But there is fruit on the tree, but it's not very useful in this system just because this doesn't look like a very natural tree, right? We've This is obviously some kind of mathematical process, and anyone could look at this and be like, well, it just doesn't look very natural. So I'm just going to refresh the page because I designed an L system of my own. It still doesn't necessarily look natural in the sense that a tree might actually grow like this because this obviously doesn't look like a real tree in that sense. But it is a lot more natural in the way that it looks. It's a lot more complicated. There's some branches to it. And if I generate a few times, you'll see we get slightly different results. But again, these L systems are designed to follow specific rules. And it can do nothing but follow these rules. But I'm using the same building blocks that I showed you with the very simple recursion. Uh, we're just using brackets, using rotation. We're using the asterisk. The only other instruction I have in here is an S. So I'm using S to put some space in between the branches. I just thought it looked cool, especially at the lower iterations. As it starts to get built out, it just adds a little bit of some texture to it that I really liked as I was building it out. So uh, a few of the other things in this tool that you can... Oh, yeah, and you can bump the iterations really high, and it creates some, some pretty cool-looking things. Maybe that's even more natural-looking now that the branches seem to fill out a little bit, and there's a lot more fruit on the tree. But I do want to just go through the tool really quickly and show you some of the options you have for customizing these as you play with these... Uh, these rules to build out your own L system. So iterations is kind of self-explanatory. The higher the number, the more times that the rules will run. Length is the initial length of the, the instruction to draw a line. Length change is how much the length will be kind of multiplied by every iteration. So as, as the iterations go up, the length will go down so that we keep everything within the canvas. Length drift is uh, there's some random aspect to the length just to give the tree a little bit more natural feel so if i bump that up then we start generating it's just going to be there's going to be some variance uh in the the height of the tree as that length changes the length drift changes angle is just the the angle that it rotates by when you use the plus and the minus symbol so if i bump this up to 60 obviously uh, we get a little bit more that's actually pretty close to some hexagon angles so that's cool and you can play with that Let's drop this back down. Angle drift is similar to the link drift. The angle is going to deviate each time it's called by just a little bit, uh, and you can affect that here. These are the rules. Uh, I would also recommend, this is kind of a caveat at this point where I'm talking about the tool, but you can look up a lot of rules online for systems that have already been defined. You can try to plug them in here. I may not have programmed everything as far as the, the types of instructions, but I think most L systems rely on simple things like drawing lines, rotating, and then defining the angle of rotation. If you can do that, then I think you can draw most L systems that people have defined. The other settings that I have in here are around color. Let me actually refresh this so we can look at the tree again. So the color, I mean, there's obviously some boilerplate. You can just play with the background of the image. We can change the color of the fruit, make it, or the color of the shape behind it. So let's make the shape kind of a dark green, the background a little brighter, and then the fruit will make it kind of a blue color. And we'll generate that again. So that's pretty cool. That's just some visual nice aspect to it. The fruit does differ in color a little bit. You can see the deviations between the circles. Uh, I just kind of define that here. There's red drift, green drift, and blue drift. The higher it is, the more those individual RGB values will, will differ in every time a fruit is drawn. We can change the line color. I haven't really used that that much, but you can do it. You can have a darker background and a lighter line if you wanted to. We'll put that back at black. Line width can go up, but it's very easy for it to become very, very uh, 
uh, dents very quickly considering how many lines there are, but you have that option. Line opacity, uh, it's kind of the same thing. It'll just become thicker, more well-defined, or you can drop it down. Actually, oh, that may not actually be working. Okay, that may be, I'll fix that right after this video, but hopefully by the time anyone else uses it, that, that will be fixed. So, But same kind of idea. We're, we're defining something, and then we have opacity drift. That would essentially be the random aspect that these lines are drawn. Maybe they're more opaque sometimes, maybe they're less. So the generate button just regenerates based on the current settings, and then save will allow you to download an image of whatever you create. This has been a much different video. I just mostly wanted to demo the system and just have it out there as kind of a resource to anyone that might use it and maybe maybe they haven't worked with those systems much or they don't know some of the settings. Who knows? I just wanted to have it as a resource. Hopefully people will enjoy the tool and the video. And I hope that uh, if you have any feature suggestions or things you'd like to see out of something like this, please let me know. If you make anything with the tool, you can send that image to me as well. I'd love to see it. I hope people get excited about it. It is very exciting. Remember that I am going to have some resources in the description for you to check out that are maybe better beginner intro to L systems since this is, you know, this is obviously you're just playing with L systems at this point. So uh, thank you again for watching. Thank you very much. I'm excited to see what you make with it. And I'll see you in the next video.